This video will contain spoilers to the following movies. Blast those officers. I hate being in here, don't they realize that? Hello! Remember me? You shut me off, and that was all. But how are you awake now? Nobody turned me back on, I did that by myself. Now let's get you out of prison. Yes! Yeah! Yahoo! Now I can rob that bank to become a millionaire. Thanks to the auto-turning on robot that had the auto-turning on feature I never knew about because I didn't program it into it. If you're unfamiliar, plot devices are an object, event, or a situation in a story that only serves the purpose of advancing its plot structure and makes absolutely no sense by any other means. Film has quite a few examples of certain scenes or objects that just makes the plot structure feel forced, which is something you don't want to do. One such example is in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. In the movie, Bill and Ted are attempting to grab historical figures from various time periods by using a time machine in the shape of a phone booth in order to pass their history exam. It doesn't seem like it would be that stressful, except the clock at St. Diem's is still running, meaning they're running on a time limit, despite, you know, having a time machine. Why does that matter? Granted, it's for the story and we need the stakes to be there, but let's take a look at Back to the Future. Marty's stuck in the past because the DeLorean does not have the power to need it to time travel. It could only get that power from a bolt of lightning, which Marty knows would strike the clock tower at a certain moment sometime in the future of the time period he's currently in. So he has Doc set up an experiment at the clock tower so the lightning would strike it when it does, and Marty would have to start driving the DeLorean at the right time so the hook on top could collide with the wires at the exact moment the electricity starts to run across it. Whew. Oh, that was a mouthful. If you've seen the movie, then all that should seem completely reasonable and not a single bit of it is a plot device. The only thing holding him back is that he needs to get his parents back together or he'll cease to exist. With Bill and Ted, the clock only has the purpose of setting the stakes. Unfortunately, even Back to the Future can't avoid using a certain plot device. In the third movie, we see that the reason Marty was in 1885 for a long while was because the gas tank was punctured by an arrow from the Native Americans, even though none of them shot any arrows throughout the whole chase. Yeah, you noticed that too! But another example might be with Clara Clayton. Getting the DeLorean in a position where it could get up to the speed necessary to take Marty back to the future is a difficult enough burden on its own. But why does Clara need to be there to slow Doc down? Besides, the fact that Doc rescued her not knowing how it would affect a certain piece of history just adds insult to injury because it goes a little out of character even if he didn't know who he was saving. It's not exactly charming like Marty taking the hit for George causing Lorraine to be evacuated with the wrong guy. It's just stupid and an otherwise good conclusion to the trilogy. Jaws is a movie that is debatable on whether or not it has a plot device. This is when Brody's trying to call the Coast Guard so they can get that bigger boat, but Quint comes along and smashes the radio with a baseball bat. You can argue this was due to the situation they're dealing with, which is the shark being near the boat. That combined with Quint's obsession with finishing the job without any extra help whatsoever can make for a feasible argument as to why he did what he did. But still, doesn't it just come off as sick and twisted? Now there's a plot device done right, or at the very least not overly offensive and doesn't ruin the movie. Grease is another example of failing to ruin the movie with a plot device. This is when Danny and Sandy are at the drive-in. He has just earned Sandy's forgiveness for what happened at the dance and everything seemed completely fine. Then he starts forcing himself on her and she leaves him a second time. This isn't much to do with any physical object or situation. But the way Danny acted, especially after earning his girlfriend's forgiveness, was completely uncalled for, whether it be in a moral sense or in a film viewing sense. The way it was established was that he was a greaser who was different from the group he leads, but he has a reputation to keep. That's fine, but what effect of not doing that would ruin his reputation with the greasers? But this is only a small issue with an otherwise perfectly fine movie. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Now this one is just freaking stupid. Indiana Jones, one of the greatest adventure heroes of all time, is in this model suburban street, an atom bomb is about to go off, and he hides himself in a refrigerator and gets blasted out of the house, leaving him unscathed. Indy never ceases to amaze me, but even this is taking things way too far. Mid-60s Harrison Ford was somehow able to survive getting blasted from within a refrigerator that bounced and rolled off the hills. It's a stupid moment among many other stupid moments. The dialogue, the story, pretty much a lot of things about this movie is a stupid moment while it can also act as a plot device sometimes. 
I haven't even started talking about the animated movies that did this, like The Grinch 2018. The Grinch needed a reindeer and he found a big fat one named Fred, but then later on he releases him after finding out that he has a family and making him completely pointless. But then he comes back in the climax when the sleigh was about to tumble down Mount Crumpet. So basically, throughout the whole second act, he's had no purpose at all. But then the third act gives him a purpose at the last minute. Wow. Real memorable character you got there, movie! Onward is another one. The film experiments with rules and regulations that are placed within using magic, which is good. Of course, magic should have restrictions of some kind, but sometimes it tends to go a little too far. It would probably have ruined the whole movie if it weren't for its trademark Pixar emotional ending. Anyway, the magic spell is most ridiculous is when Ian and Barley use magic to disguise themselves as Colt Bronco. The spell only works so long as they are speaking the truth. The more they lie, the more of themselves they slowly reveal. This is what leads to Ian's accidental reveal of him thinking Barley is a screw-up. To me, that was done on purpose. The rule for that kind of magic is kind of stupid. Aren't you supposed to be lying? Isn't that the whole idea of a disguise? To pretend to be someone you aren't? Rise of Skywalker has all sorts of plot devices. The return of Palpatine is a major one, but let's look at a more minor example, but just as ridiculous. This is when they find this dagger with Sith writing on it. Since they got 3 people on their side, they can get the writing translated and find out what they need to find out, right? Wrong! 3PO, despite having the translation in his memory bank, cannot interpret it out loud because his programming has forbidden him to do so since the Clone Wars. The inconvenience takes him to a droid smith where they wipe out his memory just to get the translation leading them to the Sith Wayfinder. This wouldn't be such a big deal, except this forbidden translation stuff hasn't come up in any of the prequels. I'll admit, I haven't watched the Clone Wars TV show, so those who have, please explain to me why they would make 3PO unable to interpret this writing based on your knowledge of that show. I don't mean the seventh season that streamed on Disney Plus about two months after the release of Rise of Skywalker. I mean the earlier seasons from 2008 to 2014, which includes the feature film that predated the show. Oh, uh, who am I kidding? Use the seventh season as your source also. I'm sure there's something there. Would you believe there's also a plot device in James and the Giant Peach? Probably not, because of how distracted you are by how good it is. The rhino that first kills off his parents at the beginning of the movie makes a dreaded appearance as a storm cloud just as James and his friends are reaching New York City. I don't understand the reason for this. They could very well have just landed in New York City without contending with such thing. I guess it has the idea that James needs to confront his fears, but no matter which angle I look at it from, there's no reason for it. I have a feeling the rhino was made up just so James can be an orphan like many other protagonists and give him something to be afraid of. I know that it came from the book, too, but the attempt to expand its role in the film version was not very effective for me. Finally, let's bring The Wizard of Oz into play. While this movie is an absolute classic and we adore this movie, admit it, you were pretty confused as to why Glinda didn't think Dorothy would believe her if she told her to click her heels. But I think a little more confusing would be the Wicked Witch melting after having water thrown on her. How could she have gone her entire life without getting any water on her? What does she use as an alternative when she takes a bath, and most importantly, does she take a bath? However, we're not as negatively affected by this as we are with other plot devices like in Rise of Skywalker or Kingdom of the Crystal Skull because the world is developed around emotion rather than logic and we are too taken into the emotion to really care that much about the logic. And that's all I have to list on plot devices. Trust me, you're better off trying not to insert such devices into your projects, especially if they're unnecessary. A plot device doesn't always ruin a movie, but if not handled carefully, it can leave a major scar in your filmography. Any other notable plot devices that I missed? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.